Hey, look at that. Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to the show. As always, I'm your host, David Burroughs. Um, boy, this is a different show this week, because if you're watching, you're not watching on Facebook if it's live. Um, but wow, I went to go do some stuff on Facebook, and like many would, and it's it's down, right? Facebook's down along with Instagram. And I suspect a lot of people are scratching their heads going crazy. It's just one of those things, like, it's kind of like the internet, how much we've come to rely on it. But thank goodness for YouTube. And uh, we're on Twitter as well. LinkedIn's having some glitches too. I'm not too sure what's going on there. But we're here. Um, and if you're not watching live, then you're watching the replay. So thank goodness for that as well. Let's go to... Uh, uh, who do we got there? The goat says hello. I'm not working today. Oh, Jesse. Okay. It's so different having you on YouTube because you're usually watching on Facebook. Glad to have you here, though. And then Barry Loxton is out there. Good afternoon. What a great weekend we had in Cerny. Yes, Barry. Absolutely. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but before we do, I always like to give a shout out, of course, to all my supporters here, my, my title supporters, Active Ears Hearing Center. Thank you, Christine Fiji, always uh, supporting, not just here on the show, but she's a huge uh, community supporter in many different ways. So thank you, Christine. Hughes Intelligence, uh, Barry Bentley and uh, his crew at Hughes Intelligence. We're going to be seeing them at the Sarnia Sting and uh, some other things. We're going to be working with them as well. But been great supporters here as well. Thanks so much for that. And our friends at Oswald's Diner, uh, you can visit them online at oswalds.com. Family owned and uh, family family taste and food. I probably eat there twice a week and it's delicious. And I'm not just saying that, like my favorite actually is the uh, spicy Buffalo chicken wrap. That's the one that I always have. So thanks to Oswald's for their support and Joe's discount tire. Uh, I hate to say it, but you better get those winter tires on soon. Shh, I know, but it's going to be here before you know it. And of course our friends at AG event graphics supporters for 10 years here on the show. That's right. We're coming up on 10 years of the show on November the 6th. Thank you to them as well. And of course, thanks to all of you come out here and watch. And I mentioned 10 years on the show. If you've been watching, I've been sort of teasing for a couple of weeks. We're going to have a party. Seems like we're able to have a party of some sort. And we're going to do that on November the 6th at the Moose Lodge. And we're going to have some music and some fun and some food. And I've got all this paraphernalia from over 10 years that we're going to be sharing. And my friend Dana Piggott and my wife Jennifer are helping me put it all together. So uh, keep an eye out for how you can attend that because obviously it's going to be limited numbers. And uh, we're going to be supporting uh, Ohana Landing as part of that as well. So I'm excited for that. And 10 years, I've been go already going through the, the stuff from uh, uh, over the 10 years. And I'm just like, it's like going through a memory book, right? It's kind of cool to do that. So stay tuned for more of that. Carl Freeman, all the way from Oshawa, Ontario. Happy Monday back to you, Carl. And my friend Dom Fernandez watching on YouTube. And uh, Dom, I'm really proud of you, buddy. Dom's been uh, in the hospital for a while, still fighting MS, but he's got his laptop there and he goes live and does his own uh, karaoke singing and, and talks to the community. And uh, Dom, I, I'm overdue for a visit with you, buddy, but I'm, I'm really proud of you for, for keeping on going. Good for you, buddy. Um, so thanks to all of you for joining in uh, here on YouTube as we're used to being on Facebook. But like Barry mentioned, wow, what a fun weekend we had in Point Edward. And uh, it, it was, it, I got to tell you, the first day, like Oct Border Fest, uh, put on the Blue Water Border Fest uh, organization here in Sarnia. And the, the vibe in the very beginning was like, like I didn't know what to expect, right? Because this was like the first concert around this area that anybody's going to. So it was like, how is everybody going to react? And I got to tell you, everybody was so well behaved, having a good time. They were just happy to be out and appreciative to be out. Um, I was happy to be back as a, the master of ceremonies. Blue Water Border Fest uh, keeps asking me back, so I guess I'm doing something right. Um, but I have a lot of fun up there, and I missed it as well. You know, the, the musicians missed it, and the crowds missed it. I missed being able to. So it was nice to be back in that atmosphere. And uh, as you can see there, everybody having a good time. I got some drone shots uh, from there. I'd never, ever seen the Bare Naked Ladies before, so I was really stoked about that. They are such a fun group to see live they they put on a fabulous show kim mitchell i hadn't seen kim mitchell the first time i saw kim mitchell was in the 80s when i was in high school <laughs> and uh saw him at the old cernia brock street barn and i haven't seen him since so it was nice to to revisit that as well the glorious sons and born ruffians of course did a fabulous job on the friday night 
along with uh, local acts King Bricks on the Friday night and Rumblefish Saturday. I hadn't seen them in a while either. So it's, it seems like some sort of normalcy uh, is coming about, if that's the thing. I've always said, uh, you know, people say, well, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm like, yeah, well, it's just really been a really long tunnel, <laughs> right? But we're getting there. And uh, more things in the works. Hopefully, uh, that will be announced soon. I know the Blue Water Border Fest Committee is working on some other stuff. So uh, thanks to them for all of their hard work. Speaking of music, I want to talk about Rooster once again out on the Golden Mile. I still haven't made it out there. Uh, just my schedule doesn't allow so far, but I see all this wonderful music happening out there. Uh, Oswald's actually is a part of the food and catering out there now as well. So you've got some great people in the works out there to make things happen. And every Wednesday night is an open mic jam. And you can just go out there and take your guitars or your instruments or whatever you got and have some fun. Um, and even if you don't have an instrument, they need an audience, right? So head on down there Wednesday nights uh, from 6 to 9 and support Rooster at the Open Mic Jam. It's so just such a good feeling. Like It's like that thing of hope, I guess, is what it felt like on the weekend. And it was just nice to see everybody behave there as well. So kudos to everybody for that. All right, we're going to jump into it right away. I've got my guests uh, waiting in the lobby here, and we've got Heather Carswell and Jenna Sawinski. Thanks for joining us, ladies. Hi, thanks for having you. us. You're welcome. Did you, you heard me kind of talking about the excitement over the weekend. Either one of you make it out to Point Edward for the concert? I did not. No, <laughs> I was closing up my trailer, unfortunately, this oh, week. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I did not either, but I did see lots of people down there. So it was yeah. great to see everyone out and everyone supporting it and uh, seeing, like you said, some normalcy back in our, in our city. Yeah. Whatever that means. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't Whatever know, it, it, it felt good bit. to be there anyway. Yeah. It looked like a great time. So let's, uh, let's dive right in. Uh, Heather, you are the project coordinator for this uh, apprenticeship network. And uh, Jenna, your your assistant to Heather. Um, I, first thing I, I I hear the word apprenticeship network, and I think, what exactly is that? You know, and and uh, why do we need it? But we're going to go through that. So uh, maybe Heather, you want to start with what is the apprenticeship network? Yeah, for sure. So right now, Jenna and I are working on. Um, an apprenticeship network project. And what this project consists of is we have a few different goals. Our goals are to help work with Lambton, uh, Sarnia Lambton employers, help to stimulate and kind of get the awareness and knowledge out there that the skills trade is it's in demand and we do not have enough apprentices. So it's to work with the local employers to get um, them hiring apprentices and then also to get people interested in the trades, um, especially right. working with, say, local school boards or colleges all across Ontario to to work with them to to get them kind of going into the skilled trades, realizing you know there's more than uh, there's more than going to college and university after high school. This is a great option, especially being in Sarnia Lambton. Um, mm -hmm. We're well, really. Yeah. And let me sort of just stop yeah. you there for a minute, if yeah. you don't mind. Like, yeah, that's sort of what comes to the forefront of my mind is uh, you're promoting this. And yeah. the first thing I'm thinking is Sarnia Lampton, why would you need to promote this? Isn't that kind of <laughs> a big deal around here? So, but obviously that's, I, I don't have that accurate information. <laughs> so it is a big deal. It is, it's a huge part of our local economy. Um, however, we need more. You need more apprentices. Um, apprentices definitely are a big part of what makes the world go round. Um, and it's across all, all sectors. It's the industrial construction, motive power and service. Um, so I think a lot of people just tend to really focus on, especially in the city that we're, we are from, is the construction and the industrial section. And so not so much the service and uh, motive power. But uh, there's there's a lot of demand. There's a, a big demand for hairdressers. There's a big demand for automotive technicians and not enough people to enter into these roles. So right now, the average journey person in the skilled trades is around 50 years old, which means these people are, are they're wanting to retire yeah. in the next 10 to 15 years. Right. They uh, they're looking to retire. So we in order to get people trained and into this journey person role, we need to start training those apprentices today. Um, there is a shortage all across Canada of, of skilled trades, again, across all four. Why, sectors. why is that? What is that? 
We don't really know. No? Um, Interesting. <laughs> so our goal or part of our goal is to to kind of create the awareness around this, make sure employers are aware, you know, apprenticeship is a great opportunity to to train the people that that that's going to be your future of your company. Yeah. So um, when you hire an apprentice, you get to train them to fit your your company needs. Uh, there's great financial incentives you create these relationships and they become loyal employees for hopefully forever. Um, apprentices on the other side of it, looking at it, um, obviously the number one thing is, is, is finances for most yep. people at the end of the day. And, uh, the skilled trades offer, um, offer a, a great life. Uh, the, a lot of them start out at a great salary and there's lots of room for growth within right, right. the skilled trades. So I think just promoting it, um, you know, really getting into the colleges and the high schools and, and letting people know, yes, there's college, yes, there's university, but there also is, there's apprenticeship and, and it's, uh, it's a great career path. Um, I know I'm sure Jenna can attest to it too. I have lots of friends, um, lots of people I know that have went away and, and did get a university degree and, and that's great. And they're back and they're in the skilled trades and they're, they're, they make a good living and they love the work that they do. They're hands-on people. Right. Um, so we need more of them. Jenna, what uh, can you add to the conversation here? Like a uh, sort of, uh, obviously you echo a lot of what, what uh, Heather said. Yeah. What's, well, what's your side and in involvement in all of this? I am basically her right hand woman. And <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I do a lot of the same thing she's doing. So she is doing more of the in-person employer outreach where I may do some follow-up stuff or I may do their social media or book or things, but I am still very much there kind of, you know, marching and beating the drum of hiring, um, you know, those skilled trades people, because it's true. It's, it's scary that the, the labor shortage is, is getting, the gap is getting wider and yeah. if you don't do something about it. There's going to be like a, a big, big, and is this a result, would you say, like you say, you don't really know why, but, but I, I guess, I guess we'd be guessing, but uh, the P word, you know, the pandemic, um, <sighs> that's obviously, I would, I would be safe to assume has had an effect on this um, and, and offer its own challenges and even just promoting something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say it's definitely had an effect, but this, uh, this actually was happening right prior to the mm -hmm. pandemic. Um, so okay. the pandemic has definitely made it worse, but yeah, this was happening before the pandemic. So hmm. I, I, I would say it's a mixture of a generational thing, people wanting to, you know, go getting kind of somewhat pushed, told, you know, the only path after high school is, uh, is college or university. Um, go to school, get good grades. Go to school, yeah. So, um, and not being told all of the the wonderful things that do come from apprenticeships and and the abundance. Like we have over 144 skilled trades. I feel wow. like when when most people talk about skilled trades, they probably think of maybe five. Um, there, there's a huge variety of, of careers and potential opportunities. Out well, there. you mentioned hairdresser. That's, that's not one that popped into my it's head. Not, when I was of that, no, right? uh, chef Baker, it's, it's endless. The opportunities are endless and it's, um, a big, another big part of it is connecting these people. So, um, some of these apprentices find it hard for an employer to, to work under and to, to essentially sponsor them. Right for an apprenticeship. So what we've actually done, you can see on the bottom of your screen there is sarnialampedonapprentice.ca. This is our new matching tool. So what it is, uh, it's called Sarnia Lampton Apprentice Job Match. And this tool, it's a free tool, virtual, for Sarnia Lampton employers can go on, they can create a profile and a apprenticeship opportunity. And an apprentice can go on from anywhere, uh, anywhere in Canada can go on create a profile and then apply for that opportunity and it will actually match them. Yeah, there it is. So it will match them depending on all of their qualifications and then that uh, employer's posting. 
So then it'll be a, uh, a match. It'll give you a percentage on your match and you can go ahead and connect with them there. So it's just another tool to use in their toolbox in order to help them succeed and not have to, especially these small to medium sized businesses, they don't have uh, all of the resources the big, large companies do. Right. Mm -hmm. So if this helps them take away some of that time is money, right? Um, a lot of these small to medium sized businesses, the owner's working too. Uh, the owner's usually a, a very hands-on person. So if this helps them with a little bit of the recruiting, then, uh, then we've done our job in creating this matching tool. So we're really hoping that Sarnia and Lampton employers will hop on there, uh, create some apprenticeship opportunities, yeah. and we'll we'll make some connections. So we got to really that's uh, well, one of the reasons we're here today talking about this is to get the word out there. But yes, um, what about schools like uh, well, something like I I teach uh, the SWAC part of the SWAC program at Lampton College dual credit, yeah. and that's teaching a lot of different skills and stuff. Um, are, are is that happening right now are you working with schools to so, try to help get in and promote or is, yeah. is that a barrier or? yeah so we're going to be working with all of the colleges all across ontario we're oh. also working with um the oyap coordinators the ontario youth apprenticeship program coordinators for the high schools as well so about both the public and uh catholic school boards so that should help us get the word out there and allow for these apprentices to get on here and apply for hopefully available positions within the Sarnia Lampton. And then at the end of the day too, it's about, it, we are we are a growing, lo our local economy is growing. Yep. Um, so we want to, we want to attract talent. We want, or we, mm -hmm. and we want say the students that are going to school at Lampton College, we want them to stay. We, we want them to stay in our community and we want our economy to grow. So, so these are all kind of key parts that play into what we're trying to do and create awareness. What about like you say, okay, college and high school, but, and uh, um, what about like grade eight, you know, like you, you, I would think you'd want to maybe catch them there to start promoting so that by the time they get through high school, there's some been, uh, you know what, Dave, and you are right, because really, as soon as they get in mm -hmm. high school, I feel like Pretty much, you enter in grade nine, and people are asking you what you're going to do what after gonna do? high school. What do you want to do when you grow up? Uh, yeah. I know. Start to make uh, some decisions. Yeah, right? it's, right? Always, oh, it's always the next. That's thing, a lot of pressure right? too. Yeah, it's always yeah. the next thing. You're here. What about what about the next thing? So yeah. um, that is a great point, and know. that's definitely <laughs> in another area we probably should be reaching out to and yeah. and uh, just giving them that idea of of the, these different paths that they could take to build a successful um future right jenna i'll come over to you uh, maybe you could speak to uh or to see some of the projects uh, you've listed here for me um, <laughs> yes. like employer outreach and he's got some info sessions coming up talk about that yes so we um are doing employer outreach um so primarily heather will be in person when we can COVID's kind right. of made some, <laughs> some rips in the, the system in there, but um, doing some outreach there, kind of just telling people about who we are. And that's all of Lampton County. So yeah. that's going from Grand Bend all the way to, you know, Port Lampton. I love that you mentioned Grand Bend because let's be honest, they get forgotten sometimes at the Grand <laughs> Lampton County. So that's yes. good to know. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's all the different sectors, just trying to let them know about us and what we're doing, um, trying to help them, you know, maybe break down some barriers to hiring an apprentice. Maybe they don't know the process of how to go about that. Um, and now with our, our new matching tool launched, um, that should be a little bit easier because our outreach was a little bit difficult when we were like, it's coming, <laughs> we'll have this where now we'll right. be able to to provide that. And then we also um, coordinate some information sessions. So the first one was last month and we did it um, on the application process. We have another one coming up on October 20th and that's all about um, accessing the grants and incentives um, for hiring apprentices. Um, and then we'll also highlight um, obviously the matching tool. It's a, it's a big part of that hiring the apprentice. Yeah. And yeah. then we will be focusing one of our information sessions more on students and trying to kind of promote that that skilled trades apprentice path for for young people. And then um, 
we still get to decide after that. <laughs> what well, we're gonna it's do. not. We're we're focusing on young people right now in the conversation, but this is for anybody, right? Like any age. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. For any age. Yeah. We're not just focused on. So an old guy like me says he wants to change his career. <laughs> I should come and see you. Yeah, yeah. we're we're here to definitely do, help you help you connect with the proper people. Um, another big thing, like Jenna said, is is the in incentives and grants, and that's on both sides. So both apprentices and employers. Um, there's a there's a few government grants out there so that money. That's what we want to hear. There's money, yeah. <laughs> there's money, and and it's sitting there, and we we want people to use it, right? Um, however, we don't want people to get frustrated trying to access it or figure out how to go about getting it. So we're here to connect you with the proper people and help you access that um, more easily. What about, uh, it comes to mind too, like employment agencies, like we've got several uh, employment agencies in Sarnia Lambton that are all unique in their own way. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you connecting with them as well to, to help promote this? Yes, absolutely. And so our project actually came from a, a larger apprenticeship network committee, and we have lots of members and community partners. Um, so some of them are the employment agencies. We do a school board. We have Lampton College representatives. We have Literacy Lampton. We have um, both Amshanon and Kettle Point. Um, oh there's God. the academic upgrading and the employment services there. So we're really trying to make this a like a collaborative approach because there's lots of different ways that people can enter into yeah. this this apprenticeship part, like network and pathway. But then a lot of them also connect with employers as well. So right. it, that's. We're the network. The well, I was going to say that's really the key word in all this is building that network, uh, and uh, it's going to take time. But it certainly, mm -hmm. uh, it seems like a, why wouldn't it grow? Um, and and you've you've certainly uh, you know laid out lots of plans here for people to get access to support because that's probably one of the uh, um, the biggest things is uh, you know, and I've talked to some people my age and in their forties as well that are like. Uh, I want to make a change, but I don't know where to start. That, yeah. the, 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 putting that f foot forward, that first step, right, is really the toughest part of the journey sometimes. So um, once people get connected to you, though, and they start, let's say they figure out what they want to do, what about, like, post, like, after they get started? Are you, are you still providing support to the employer and the apprentice during, like, while they're involved with each other? So no, essentially once they're connected and then the employer and that apprentice have that relationship, yep. then we are kind of, we are out of the picture and it's, it's on to the next one. Yeah. Hopefully moves on to, to a, a, a lifetime employment, a career. Um, so that's our whole goal is making that connection, getting people into the trades, getting employers to hire apprentices and realize that, um, in come 10 years, there's there's definitely going to be that gap if we're not hiring apprentices today. Yeah. I well, do want to add yeah, just go ahead. on that note. Um, so once an apprentice, you have to apply through the Ministry of Labor, Training and Skills Development for an apprenticeship. So that's part of what we would do is help kind of navigate what that looks like, where you to go. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And so then once that person is in an apprenticeship, that minister, there will be a ministry representative that would check in on them and make sure that this the employer or sponsor is signing off on things. That's where they would do the right. testing. So that yeah. part there would be kind of that follow-up piece, but we would not be connected in that at right. that point. Just, well, uh, just it, to clarify. Good point. It, yeah. <laughs> It sounds like a fabulous program. I, I'm really excited to to see this grow, and uh, I, I know I'm going to start talking to people about it because <laughs> we there's, appreciate there's, it. <laughs> there's so many people that can use this, right? And yeah, and it's an interesting topic because I I feel like it's something that's not talked about. So so we definitely need to be talking about it. We need to, we need to be aware of it, and we need to uh, we need to mm -hmm. hopefully act and and get these apprentices going to just to make sure that our local economy stays strong. Yeah. Well, and that's, let's touch on that for a, a moment, if I can, let's, let's talk about post pandemic or post uh, <laughs> CERB running out uh, sort yeah. of thing. Like, um, you know, some people are also deciding to stay home, but I mean, 
maybe that's partly because they don't know where to go or they don't know what they want to do, right? And this mm-hmm. this could help guide them into that, I would think. This could. It also, the pandemic, I feel like it's impacted everyone so differently, but it's impacted everyone in, in some way or another. Yeah. And a lot of people may have left a career because of, of whatever reason, um, children or, or whatever the reason is because yep. they needed to be home. And maybe it's something that they don't want to go back to. So if that's the case too, this is a great time to start exploring your, your yeah. options. Um, yeah, there like, there's lots of different programs out there. There's lots of, of different hands-on things that you can get connected with it to do, to see if you, if you do want to change in career. Um, so again, we can connect you with all of these people and, uh, and see, I know all across the board, not just in skilled trades, everyone's having a, um, an issue staffing right now. So that's kind of hard to be talking to employers. And it's sad when, like, I know there's a few restaurants in town that, that don't even have enough staff to run I know. <laughs> I all day, <laughs> every day. And it's heartbreaking. And hopefully that changes. Um, and that's not just across the skilled trades. That's, that's every single Everywhere. industry. Um, mm-hmm. So hopefully that changes. But obviously our focus is the skilled traits um, and and the kind of the shortages there. Very good. Well, I know you got another information session coming up on October 20th at 10 a.m. And we'll share that link uh, on Facebook when it's back up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like the, the world comes to an end when social media. Where did it go? <laughs> so, right? yes. I, uh, I actually, Snapchat's I could, really happy right now. I, I typed into Google and, yeah. and it says breaking news. Like this is the biggest thing going on right now. I'm like, oh right. gosh. And then I, all I, I could, selfishly, all I cared about was how am I going to do my show? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, YouTube and uh, Twitter. Uh, and thank you, ladies. I really appreciate This has yeah. been very informative and uh, thank you. Um, I think we should follow up, uh, you know, in a few more months with you. That would be great. And, that would and, be, uh, yeah, that would absolutely be lovely. And yeah, if you um, can talk, talk about this program and talk about the matching tool and uh, yeah. We'll keep mentioning it on the show every week. How about that? Okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay. no, I, think I, 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 I think it's really important. I mean, on a serious side of all this, it's, this is, this could be life-saving for people. Mm-hmm. Like, like, it is really important. About that, right. And uh, that's important. So thank you. Uh, I'll let you, Jenna, uh, or either one of you got anything you want to add that we missed? I think that's it. I think we covered everything. We just really want to thank you for having us on. And and hopefully some people can take away some information. And if anyone wants to reach out to us um, on that website, you can actually uh, connect with us and ask any questions. Even if you need guided any in any direction, we're here. Awesome. Heather, Jenna, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you so Thank much. You. You. Bye. All right, Heather and Jenna from, uh, well, Sarnia Lampton Economic Partnership and the Apprenticeship Network. Lots of great information there. Uh, if you're watching this live on YouTube, well, you know Facebook's down. And if you're watching the replay, then Facebook's back up. And <laughs> we're going to share that on our Facebook. Uh, great information. Uh, great projects going on there. And uh, thanks again, both to Heather and Jenna for that information. All right. Well, just before you go, uh, speaking of YouTube, I'm still working on reaching to a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do me a huge favor and click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon. So you get notified whenever I go live. And um, thanks again to uh, everybody for watching when you could hear with the, the, the Facebook and Instagram thing. It's just so weird how we rely on that. But for those of you here watching live and for those of you going to watch the replay, uh, that's all the time I got for you this week. Have a great weekend and an even better weekend. I'll see you next time right here on the show. Bye for now. <laughs>